Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis and today we're going to be covering the topic of answering a simple question. Why does your martial art not work in UFC, Ultimate Fighting Championship? So the UFC was originally designed as kind of a showcase for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It was put together by a group of people and kind of it served as a giant infomercial for how effective Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was and it did a good job. However, over the years it has morphed and changed into a really genuine uh, showcase of mixed martial arts in which we see some of the greatest fighters of all time putting together techniques from around the globe to compete in this mixed martial arts competition. Now a lot of people will make excuses about why their art does or doesn't work within the confines of the rules of UFC or mixed martial arts for a broader term. I've heard all sorts of bullshit excuses for why their art doesn't work. They'll say, well, I'm a striker and the floor, it's too soft to you know, make for a good striker. Okay, well then explain to me Conor McGregor. And then other people will say, well, um, you know, the cage really uh, disrupts somebody's ability to do a good spear or grapple properly, so uh, it actually favors a striker. Well, that's probably not true either. The design was literally designed by grapplers. Of course, one of my favorite is people say, my art is so incredibly deadly that I have, you put those rules on me, I couldn't do any of my stuff. Well, I disagree with you there. Some of the great champions uh, are Kempo practitioners, and Kempo is one of the most violent, deadly, brutal arts in the world, uh, and they manage to modify their art to be able to be in the ring. So why is it that your art doesn't work in the UFC? How come you don't see high-level Wing Chun or high-level... Um, karate or high-level taekwondo in the UFC? Well, you have to look at the term mixed martial art and understand what the hell that actually means. The truth is the days of just one art stepping into the ring and dominating are long gone. In the early days in which people were less educated, you could come in with an art that no one had ever heard of and beat people because they'd never seen your technique. However, I would argue that there's basically no pure Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters or no pure boxers, or no pure Muay Thai fighters coming into mixed martial arts and having any kind of success today. Because nowadays, the fighters that are in the ring are far more complex. They have mixed martial arts, not just one. So sure, sure, maybe they don't know your one technique, but they probably have 40 techniques that your art doesn't cover. This is one of the biggest reasons why people don't see individual arts within MMA. It's just a matter of the people who are mixed martial artists have a broader knowledge of fighting than having an expertise in one particular system will um, allow to overcome. But rest assured, there is no real high-level martial arts in MMA other than high-level MMA. For example, people will say, well, I never see anyone do the complex trapping of Wing Chun in mixed martial arts. And you're right, it doesn't happen. Because a complex series of trapping in Wing Chun is really designed for Wing Chun versus Wing Chun. That you are in your school fighting people who've also done Wing Chun, and so you guys get in there and you guys kind of know counters for counters for counters. You end up needing a more complex, high-level set of techniques to best somebody who already knows your moves but you will see low level Wing Chun. You'll see basic things like leg kicks, trapping the lead hand, firing off the lead, center line punches, straight line blitzes. You will see that in UFC. Now whether or not they call it Wing Chun, it's beside the point, because you know what? It really isn't. It's mixed martial arts. For example, let's take Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, the foundation of the UFC. You don't really see high-level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu techniques on the regular in UFC. Sure, you'll see somebody get a twister or maybe a gogo plata, but for the most part, what you see is blue belt, that's the second belt, blue belt Jiu-Jitsu. You see people doing basic takedowns. You see people doing arm bars and chokes. So you don't see high-level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in UFC very much. Why is that? Once again, high-level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is not designed to compete against a mixed martial artist. The fact is, the basics is all you really need to get in there and kind of understand the ground fighting game. The high-level stuff is there so you can play with other Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners. The fact is, the days of just one martial art having any kind of success in 
UFC are basically over. What we're seeing today is complex fighters who understand stand, clinch, ground. They understand kicking, punching, trapping, clinch techniques. They know how to throw knees and elbows as well as they know how to throw long distance kicks. However, something very interesting has started to crop up in the past few years, and that is slightly higher level techniques have started to slip their way into the ring. There was a time in which nobody would throw a spin kick in the UFC. Now with great fighters like Holly Holmes and Anderson Silva, we're starting to see some of the slightly higher level techniques start cropping up. The fact is the UFC isn't as old as all these other arts. These other arts have high level techniques, not because of a want to make the art more difficult, but out of a necessity for competing against other people who have done the art for years. As we see mixed martial arts grow and become a more fully developed system of fighting, we're going to see more and more complex systems of defense and offense to compensate for the growing talent that enters into the octagon. So maybe perhaps, you know, 50 years from now, we will be seeing high level jujitsu, high level Wing Chun, high level boxing, high level whatever. We may be seeing that very high level techniques, but the fact is right now UFC is a low level art. But the beauty of it right now, being kind of in its infancy, being in the point in which people are just really starting to figure it out, is that we kind of get to hash out what are the techniques that work best when there is so few rules governing what you are and are not allowed to do. And what we see time and time and time again is it's not the high level techniques of any art that has success. It's all the beginner techniques, which is why we teach those things in the start. As a martial arts instructor, I want to get the most effective tools in your hand as quickly as possible. Because if you only stick around with me for six months, I still want you to be able to defend yourself. So I'm not going to be teaching you how to jump into a triangle choke. I'm going to teach you how to hold guard. I'm not going to teach you a complicated set of trapping from Wing Chun. I'm going to teach you to cover the front hand as you strike because it is the simple things that make for an effective fighting system. Think about it this way. Instead of trying to constantly accumulate as many techniques as possible, instead think about elimination. Taking your art and finding the raw essentials that make it most effective and honing in those skills. And that's effectively what mixed martial artists do for the standing phase, the clinch phase, and the ground phase. So if you're wondering why your art doesn't work in the UFC, the truth is no art works in the UFC anymore. Nowadays, it is a complex series of arts in which we have taken effectively some of the most effective techniques from various arts and put them together into a hybrid system that has been dubbed mixed martial arts. At my school, we utilize this formula of mixed martial arts. Instead of preparing you for the ring, we utilize it for self-defense. That self-defense system is called combative defense system, and it is one of the most effective and well-rounded self-defense systems in the entire world. If you'd be interested in studying that with us, all the information gets started is in the description box down below. We also have a Patreon where you can study a little bit of it online. Be sure to rate, comment, like, and subscribe. And until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.